endless word presses, like at least heard the term words. Okay, so it seems like when this audience will for this. Um, so, when you think about WordPress, uh, what do you think? You think there is a front end and a back end. But what headless WordPress is, is WordPress without front end. And what do you think of is this? WordPress looks like this and there is also a back end with it. Um, but what headless WordPress means is that there is no intricately tied front end. But what exists is a back end. Okay, let me clear this. Um, headless WordPress is about using WordPress only as a content management system as an and not as a front end. Headless WordPress does not decide the looks of the front end and another us explore this in deep. Here's how it works. In WordPress, there is a WordPress backend which is connected to the MySQL database like this. And then there is a front end which fetches the data from MySQL database. And this is not headless. What is headless is when that WordPress backend spits out JSON API, it's like this. And then this REST API can be connected to literally any content. But in this talk, um, I'll be talking about React frontend. I'll be giving live demo of React frontend. And also we'll show you the code and how all of this goes. So there are a few basic assumptions I'm making here. Uh, first is you know what WordPress is. Second, um, you know a tiny bit of JavaScript. Uh, yeah, that's it. So, another thing, like why headless? If you have a WordPress and you have a front end with, with it, then why would you need headless? So, reason number one, separation of concerns. Like if you are being using React, then you know what this is. But um, in WordPress, what I mean by this is that uh, you, you have a front end team which will work on front end and another team on back end and that will be how we will be separating the concerns. Creativity with modern frameworks. Um, in PHP you know it's all about preloading and then uh, it fetches the data. It's all server reloaded, server load loaded. But uh, when you use modern frameworks like Vue and React, you can do, you can be more creative. It's not like you cannot be with WordPress. Just so you know, you can also use Vue and React with WordPress themes as well. Um, but it's actually better to keep all the separate. Reason number three, not everyone knows PHP. Like, I'm, I'm frankly saying this in a WordPress conference, I don't know PHP. I knew it, uh, but then I switched to JavaScript. Um, like, a year ago, and now I forget, for, I forgot the PHP syntax. And I'm extremely happy that Gutenberg is bringing this shift in the WordPress ecosystem about JavaScript into the WordPress world. So, WordPress isn't alone. There are many headless CMSs that you can use, and WordPress is primarily not a headless CMS, but it can be used as a headless CMS. The C.io, Contentful, and Better CMS, and there are so many more, but I'll be sharing where WordPress is, is what you should be using. Reason number one, world knows WordPress. Your friend knows WordPress. Your client knows WordPress. You know WordPress. 30%, okay, it's not 30% right now, but it's like round about 30% of web is WordPress. Word knows WordPress. Second thing, it's easy to use. I use WordPress, like I made my WordPress blog when I was very old, and the UI is so easy that everyone can do it. Installation is a thing that you might be looking at. Reason number three, well-documented API, okay? Uh, there is a WordPress codex about this. Okay. So this is the WordPress codex, and uh, this is the REST API handbook. So most of what I'm speaking today is from here. And when I mean well documented API, I mean this. This is well documented. You have most of the use cases in here, and I'll be sharing you uh, some basics about it. Okay, reason number four plugin ecosystem. 
we all know WordPress uh, it has a very large community and there are many plugins like if you want uh, some book reviews or issue tracking system you can upgrade it with WordPress using any plugins you don't have to code it or scratch and then the reason number five is WordPress community what are we? what are all of us? we are a strong community and most of other headless CMSs are still building their community uh, which gives WordPress a pro con. Reason number six, WordPress is free and open source. Um, you all know this, it's open source, you can all contribute to it and the community around it is very helpful and a lot due to the WordPress community. So now let's move on to the te technical aspect of this talk. Uh, so the REST API is called WP JSON. So what is it? It's an endpoint. Just like this. Um, so I'll be showing you how it works. Um, so yeah, this is how it works. 
for the index page, what you see is this. When you go to home page, this is built in React, just like this. There is a home component, and we can see the code here. This is the home page, and this is the home page. So for the post page, uh, I'm using Next.js, which is which does routing by default, and it is very helpful to uh, do server side rendering. Um, in this demo, I'm not doing server side rendering um, because it had a few problems, and I was doing it really quick to just show you. Uh, this is the code for the post page. This page I'm talking about. So what it does, it is loads from this WordPress front end and back end. This one, what you see, is connected directly to this 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 front end that you see here. WC Pochi demo. Let's let's try uh, changing something in the post. This is that post. Um, and just add something to it, okay. And then we go to this content. This is not a WordPress thing. This is built in React, and that's what the talk is about. So you should be seeing the new title loaded, just this one. So um, how it works is like this. This is a post page, and uh, to handle states, we are using React. Uh, we set the loading to true. Use effect is like the lifecycle uh, method in React. And what we are doing is we are fetching the post data. We are fetching post data with the help of Axios here. And so what this backend that you see here is this one. This URL is the WordPress backend. And what we are doing is we are just fetching the post and giving it a per page um, uh, and parameter that per page it has to uh, fetch these many posts that is 10. Okay, let me show you one thing. When you take a look at posts, you see there is an ID, date, there is a slug as well. And this, this is about everything about the post. There is a title which is rendered like this. Content, um, it, it comes in HTML, Excel, and then author. So what you, what you see this is, um, it's like, it's related to each other. Um, so post with author of one. If you want to find that author, you can do it like this. Slash author slash one. So uh, if we do that, then we will find the information about that author. Okay. Status quote unquote. Oh yeah. This is not author. This is user. Okay. So then we find the name of the user description. So what we will be doing is uh, we won't be making fetches one by one we will uh, do one pet at once. So what we are doing is we get the post data and uh, we, are, we are mapping each post with this WordPress data aggregator that I, this is a function that I created. So what this does is um, it, it fetches author, then it also fetches the media query, I mean the media, uh, featured media, the, image that you see is that one. Uh, you see this one here. Okay, featured media, zero. That means there is no uh, featured media, I mean, uh, the thumbnail image to this, but this post has a thumbnail, just like this. You can see the ID of it. And then you can fetch that media by media slash 10. And then we see this. So how it works is you're fetching media and author and then you're blending this with the data that you got before. So if you have the fetches with uh, React and JavaScript before, uh, so uh, you will get a bit of idea about this. And 
So we are fetching the post, just like this. If it is loading, it's loading. If it's an error, post are found. And if there is a post, we show the image. And, and, and that's how it's rendered. So you can actually see the demo uh, at this, at this GitHub URL. So as Kumara Vidu says, headless WordPress with React. So you can, you can have this demo code here. Now let's get back to the slides. This is a headless web this startup kit by Postlight and this is very handy. So you don't have to create everything from scratch, okay? Uh, that was just for the learning purpose, what I showed that this is not the optimal way to do it. Uh, what you should be doing is you, uh, you should be using some uh, starter scripts to pull off all the data. And you can create with uh, these three if you're working with React, React, Gatsby and Next.js. So that when you see React, I mean create React app, or you can use Gatsby. With, with Gatsby, you can have GraphQL fetch your data, which is very, very handy. How many of you have heard this stuff, GraphQL? Okay, so yeah, uh, I got the idea. Uh, so next day is, um, this is what, there's a server-side rendering of the JavaScript data that you can fetch. Then you can deploy. Um, with Nowder SH or Netlify. You can deploy front ends on Nowder SH or Netlify. And for the back end, you can use your regular host as well. Um, on, let me tell you this thing that Nowder SH now supports WordPress. So you can deploy your WordPress instances on Nowder SH. But then uh, your database instance needs to be bought from somewhere else. And if you, if you know these things, you can use Azure, DigitalOcean, AWS to store them all in one cloud, and that's it, folks.